This episode is brought to you by Bulletproof Script Coverage, where screenwriters go to get their scripts read by top Hollywood professionals. Learn more at CoverMyScreenplay.com. So can I just kind of dive in a little bit deeper into the heart chart? Because when you're saying you're tracking the emotional journey, what is exactly the heart chart doing to the character's emotional journey? Like, how are you tracking this? Because it sounds fantastic, but physically, like well, technically, how is it working? Uh, I wonder, I don't know if I dare, I was going to try to call up, call up one and show you. Um, well, I mean, it's a, but but the, by answering the questions, mm-hmm. um, you get a series of pluses and minuses. This is good for the character. This is bad for the character. This progresses the character. This uh, is an obstacle that stops the character. This decision this character makes is going to have a consequence. Is that consequence good or bad? So you begin to measure ups Got and downs. It. Got it. Um, setbacks, uh, successes. I have I have a, a signpost I call the top of the mountain. Um, and, and I have another one called the Cinderella moment. I have another one called resurrection opportunity. These are terms that nobody's heard before. I have uh, veteran writers go, I've never heard of a resurrection opportunity. What a great, you know, and then where it goes and why top of the mountain. What I began to learn through fairy tales and really good narrative was that there's a top of the mountain dead center in your narrative. Where is as good as you're going to get? you you, it's a, it's a success that you're, main characters have had or something they've accomplished where you're going, yes, they've done it. Now, is it, and, Chris where is Vogler, it? and Chris Vogler, his center is the ordeal. Right. You know, my ordeal is over here a little deeper in. But top of the mountain um, is, uh, is, is become a term now and it's how you structure the first half of your story. But is, to the to- the top of the mountain. but is the top of the mountain in the first act, second act, third act? No, where's, middle, where's... dead center, middle of the second act. Okay. Middle so is that dead, well? And even if you do five acts, it doesn't matter. It's the dead center of your narrative. And I begin to measure certain films and and look at them and go, wow, I'm right. Uh, in in the, the good, the first one, the good Indiana Jones, the primo Indiana. Oh, yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Literally one hour into that film, he's got the ark. He's in the truck. He's got the girl. He's on the boat. He's about to get a back rub, you know. And 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 boom, the movie's not over. Everything after that is a serious complication to whether or not he's going to make it or not, or whether he and Marion are going to survive or how they're going to get to the end of the movie. Yeah. You know? And I, and same thing in Dracula, I went back and looked at Francis's cut and I timed the rules cafe scene where he gives her the diamonds and the tears and they actually meet and oh, he so takes beautiful. her back and connects with her one hour and four minutes into a two hour and, uh, and seven minute film. And that's as good as it gets for them. Everything else after that is complicated and everybody's trying to pull you down the mountain. Cinderella, which is where this started. Cinderella, she goes to the ball. That's, you know, that, everybody that's... wants her phone number. You know, the prince goes, I'm not dancing with the sissy uglers anymore. I'm well, who are you? You know, she achieved her goal, which was in the real story, was to get to the ball and plead to the prince for her father's estate to be given back to her. The Disneyfied version and made it, you know, I want to get married to a handsome prince. Right. But that's the top of the mountain. That's dead center in the narrative. Then what happens? Oh, damn, she stays too long at the ball. Point of no return. Can't be undone. You know, consequences. Plan falls apart. You know, the end of the second act, she's back home to change the toilets again. You know, she's never going to get out. Resurrection opportunity. Oh, there's this glass slipper that she doesn't know about. It's that's circulating right. town looking for her. Resurrection opportunity. It gives your it gives your character that second hope in, for the third act. You know, so... And I begin to measure really good filmmaking and really good film. Even Tarantino is heavily structured. Oh, see, that's totally the genius. Structured. That's a, that's the genius of, of Quentin is because he's his films look like they were thrown together. But yeah. even Pulp Fiction, you watch Pulp Fiction, per- that movie perfectly, is perfectly, perfectly, perfectly structured. No, it's so it's insane. It began to be. It began to give me the feeling that structure and character go together. They're not. They're not competing with each other. They are. They are complementing each other, and if you you learn this skill mechanically, it teaches you how to do this. I don't the word teach is wrong. I don't like saying teach. It gives you strategies on how you can accomplish this for your work. You know, and our chart also tells you how long it's been since you saw a character when they entered. Oh my God, I haven't had that character in thirty pages or fifteen pages, or you know. So it begins to measure a pacing for you about when you're 
exit stage left, uh, enter stage right. You know, when when a character shows up and what their what the impact is they have on the other characters. Sometimes your characters are going in completely opposite directions. But what I love, Dracula. but what I love about your, but what you're with the heart chart, I love and and trust me, doing this show, I've interviewed everybody, I've talked to everybody about all their different type of structures. I'm always fascinated when I hear something new that gets me excited because at the end of the day, we're all trying to get to the same place. Yeah. We're we're all it's just different maps to the same place, and some people might like Vogler better or Truby better or Heart better. It, it, it's all relative. But what I love about what you're talking about is that you can see visually the entire blueprint of your story blueprint in a, a good word or a yeah, map yeah a map or a blueprint of the whole thing cuz the, the the cards are one thing but you can't physically you got to go no, in and read it yeah but visually to be able to see how the emotion of your characters and the emotion of your story is being charted each one along yeah. the way is fairly powerful and when you see like there's a there's a dip oh wait a minute there is there's no, there's a problem yeah. here. They're yeah. flat. They're flatlining. Flatlining. Uh, you don't want to do. You know. Right. You're flatlining. Then you're dead. So that means there's something wrong over here. Or I haven't seen this character for a while. Maybe we should bring this back in. That is is really fascinating. Can you tell me just um, the resurrection moment uh, or opportunity in Shawshank? I'm trying to think it in my head. I'm trying to like oh, where. Wow. Where is uh, that? Because he's lost oh, everything. Yes. Yes. It's when the resurrection opportunity is when he was when Morgan goes into. The um, goes into the, um, the 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 review that he goes through all the time, and he's been through all of this shit. And you know, they always turn him down. And this time, he goes and tells the truth. He finally stops lying, and he tells the truth to the committee. Oh, know, that's and they that, said it. but that's a resurrection for for Red. But how about for Andy? Yeah. Or is there none oh. for Andy? I got to go back and remember the movie because because I I, I I agree with you. I think that the main character of the movie is Red. It's not yeah. Andy. It's Red. Yeah. Red's the storyteller. It's his point of view. Everything's coming from Red's point of view. But Andy, you don't see his resurrection moment because his resurrection moment is kind of shown me, to us. Let me think about that because it could be because when Gil Bellows' when character gets killed, that's that's like disaster. It's yeah, all for, falling apart. So right. it's going to come after that. Whatever that resurrection opportunity is. For Andy's going to come after that, mm -hmm. um, and it may be it may be his that may be what prompts his brilliant escape. You know, his when he when he decides to I'm getting out. So in a way, what he's facing in prison after Bellows is killed, and he knows he knows that he's next. That uh, you know he, the poster is the poster is his fucking resurrection opportunity. When the po well no when he when he clicks off and that first piece of plaster comes off yeah yeah but that was years before yeah, Bellows but, but he puts the poster up right you know um, uh, I don't remember when he did that but the poster it comes after Gil's um, death so whatever it is it comes after Gil's death okay it gives him, where he gets the impetus I'm getting out of here. Yeah, and I, it, it, it's whole, it's so difficult to kind of narrow it down because Red is the main character, yeah, and Andy's so. and Andy's the back. But but we actually the, the the resurrection moment for Andy is actually revealed to us at the end when his entire yeah. story is kind yeah. of laid out. You're like, oh, that's when it happened. So it's that's not actually happened. shown to us. But Red, you're absolutely right, and it's yeah. tracked so beautifully when he just yeah, goes beautiful. in and just tells the truth. Oh, it's. Yeah. People, of the, people who listen to the show know my uh, affection for Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> and Frank. <laughs> and, Fra yeah. um, and Green Mile. I love Green Mile. Love, love Green Mile as well. Oh!